Hey ladies, today is Sunday, October 10th, 2021. I am 28 weeks and five days pregnant, so officially third trimester. Um, this is considered, what, seven months? Um, and it's like, I guess around this point you start going through nesting and wanting to get everything prepared, but for me... I find that that also brings on like a lot of anxiety because I start to feel how unprepared I am, despite the fact that this is my second child and um, my first one is only two years old and I should be like more prepared, but um, I don't feel it. <laughs> I don't feel prepared at all. Um, you know, there's still things that we have to get for this baby, like everything that um, we need, um, I want to get a new bassinet. My old bassinet was recalled. Um, so yeah, <laughs> so, so I can't use that one. Um, so now I'm in the market for a new bassinet. You know, there's lots of options out there and I'm not sure what I want to go with. I've been looking a lot at the Snoo bassinet, S-N-O-O bassinet and um it's really pricey not sure if it's worth it it has really good reviews but there are some bad reviews like with everything um there's mixed but it, it does gets really good reviews it's about sixteen hundred dollars though plus tax i guess the good thing is that there's a rental program for it where you can spend um 149 a month for there's a program they have for newborns, so it's one forty nine a month for four months, and then thirty thirty dollars a month for two months. So you keep it for basically six months, and then you send it back. And the bassinet is supposed to be good for six months, or suitable for six months, or when your child can get on um, its hands and knees. So whatever comes first. Um. So yeah. So. I think the the bassinet is the biggest thing that I'm like trying to figure out because um, I will need that day one in addition to clothes, but clothes are easy. The only thing is for me, because I have not found out the child's gender, I am still in this whole gender neutral thing, which is no fun at this stage, I know. Um, and I did it last time, I did gen gender neutral and it is kind of like, you know, blah, all the gender neutral clothing are just, you know, but I still, it has not dissuaded me from wanting, from wanting to wait to find out the gender. But if that changes, I will let you all know. Um, but you know, last time I didn't find out until my daughter was born. So I'm hoping to do the same thing this time. Although circumstances are a little different this time, like last time, my husband was able to go to like doctor visits with me and be there. And, and I feel like he felt more of a connection to the baby, but you know, seeing the ultrasounds and all of that live, but now he's not really able to do that. So because he's at home with, you know, our daughter generally when I'm at the doctor. So it just, you know, it just seems a little different this time um, around. So, yeah, anyway. Um, and I just, so I found out that I'm anemic. Um, I've never been anemic before. I was not anemic in my first pregnancy. I don't know if I just became anemic in this pregnancy or if it's something that has been going on. But um, in the recent blood test, they told me that I'm anemic, which... They acted as if it wasn't a huge, huge deal. They just said that I need to start taking iron pills, which I purchased over the counter. Um, but the thing about taking iron pills is that iron pills can create constipation. Or, well, yeah, and I'm already struggling with constipation with the pregnancy, which is very common. And so when you add the iron pills, I'm just like, oh my God, like this is going to be miserable. The good thing is that I started taking a stool softener, which maybe I started should have started taking a while back, but I started taking a stool softener, so colace twice, uh, three times a day. Um, but I don't know if that alone will be enough given the 
iron pill and iron pills, like I said, are known to make me go constipated. So I have to see how that develops. Um, you know, it's crazy because I have like, I guess a little less than 12 weeks to my due date, but because I'm getting induced in 38 weeks, that's really only like 10 weeks for me. So it is a little less than 10 weeks. So it's, um, a little scary. <laughs> it's crazy because I've done it before and all I, all I think about are like what it was like, what it was like before, but this pregnancy isn't the same as last pregnancy. And so I'm assuming delivery won't be the same. My doctor did say that it'll probably be quicker this time because it's a second. So we'll see, even though I was induced last time and it took a really long time and I'm going to be induced this time and being induced takes time. But she said, because it's my second, it probably will go quicker. So we'll see. Um, when I was induced the first time, I was induced on Saturday night around 8 p.m. is when they started. And then my daughter was not born until 3.52 on the following Monday morning. So that's quite a bit of time. But it's a process. Um, so we'll see if it's quicker this time around. So now that I am in the th third trimester doctor's appointments start to ramp up so I have to see the doctor every two weeks or not really see well I have doctor's appointments every two weeks and my doctor's office does some of the points appointments virtually so my next appointment will be a virtual one and then from there they're all they'll all just be in person and the reason I adapted to just go in person going forward is because at 32 weeks I I have well, I've had growth scans starting from 20 weeks. So um, from 20, 20 weeks and like every four weeks and they've been fine. But um, when you get to, for me, given my history, when you get, when I get to 32 weeks, I'll have um, still the growth scans every four weeks, but I'll, which will only be one, you know, two more growth scans, one at 32 weeks and the other one, I guess at 36 weeks. And then I, you know, won't have any more growth scans, but I also have something called a stress test, um, which is where, I don't know if any of you've had it is where they put this, um, monitor on your stomach and you just sit in the chair and they monitor the baby's movements. Um, it's unclear to me exactly what amount they're looking for, but they're looking for a certain amount of movements. Um, and when they get to that, they're happy and they let you leave. But when, sometimes the baby's not moving as much as they want. And so they make, you know, it can take a little bit of time. So um, I do know that that's a very unpredictable appointment because no, you know, it's really depending on how the baby wants to move or, or what it's going to do. So they have a monitor on you. I think they're checking the heart rate and the movement. Um, you're not doing anything. Um, but the monitor is on you. So you're just sitting there um, while you wait. <sighs> so that, <laughs> starting at 32 weeks, I have to have every week. So from 32 weeks to 38 weeks. So about six weeks of that. Um, and then there's still the growth scans, you know, within the four weeks. And then there's the doctor's appointments every two weeks. <laughs> So I'm going to be at the doctor quite a bit. Now, not everyone gets these stress tests. Not everyone gets these growth scans. Um, when you have a history of hypertension, the growth scans, my that's my understanding, is that the growth scans are necessary. The stress tests they do for a lot of different reasons. Um, they can do also because I'm old. Um, at 38 years old, I'm considered, it, well, when I had my daughter, I was 36. So as soon as you hit 35, your advanced maternal age so I know sometimes they just do it based off of that. They do the stress test because of the AMA um, designation. But um, yeah, so that's my update this week. So we'll just see. It's just lots of appointments as we get closer to welcoming this new baby, which, um, you know, I have a lot more anxiety than I anticipated. It's so funny, like, you know, when you're pregnant, you have your baby, then you start to forget, like as time goes on, you know, you're like, pregnancy isn't that bad. And 
all the appointments, you know, it's, I mean, none of it's really horrible, but I'm just saying like, once you're in it again, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot, you know, <laughs> but anyway, ladies, I will continue to keep you posted and hope everyone's well and I'll talk to you soon.